What's good, YouTube? It's Jason from Nautical Ball Pythons, and we are continuing with our no ultrasound breeding series. This one is a little scary because you're gonna get into my mind as we go through the collection. I'm gonna show you my different things I do every week and what I'm looking for when I say you gotta be making observations with your animals. I'm gonna take you through what I'm looking for and what I'm looking at. So let's get started. Here we go. Before we have a look at any animals, I want to talk about my breeding frequency. Because I'm not using an ultrasound, I don't have the advantage of looking at the females and seeing follicle size and determining when to put that male in. So really you're guessing and looking at visual cues to know when to pair, and I think we talked about that earlier. Um, so what I like to do is females get paired once a month and I don't like to pair more frequent than that and I know the general thinking or common logic might be the more you pair that female the better chance of that female giving you a clutch of eggs but in reality what I found was that that's stressing out your female and <laughs> at the end you end up with uh, poor poor results when you're pairing that putting that male in weekly or just be patient with the season and what I like to do is pair that female once a month with my males um, again I don't like to overwork my males so one female a week is you in general the most work I'll give a male so essentially my routine is I'll feed on the weekend on Monday or Tuesday the males go in with a female um, by the end of the week they're done doing what they're doing pull them out put put them in their tubs feed them and do that routine over again um, again guys I want to stress don't overwork your males and there's no need to be getting that male in with that female every week or every every other week once a month is fine and you'll have fabulous results you'll have happy stress-free females you'll have males that aren't overworked and at the end of the season you'll have very healthy animals so that being said let's have a look at some animals alright so here we're looking at a really nice super fire girl with some poop on her head and um, so in terms of maintenance what I do is make sure there's fresh water make sure that the tub is clean and oh, I do like to mess um, I like to make sure that the tubs of my females have really high humidity during this time so I so I do like to mist one thing I do want to note and for me, me for myself my observations of my animals this girl is still feeding still feeding well with a fairly aggressive feeding response and she's still laying on the heat so all this is information that I take in during the season to know where in the progression um, the female is. So this girl will be getting bred once a month and I'll continue to breed her because all looks well and all looks very promising. Okay, now we're looking at a proven breeder Enchi Pastel Yellow Belly. With this female, let me pull her out and get a better look. She doesn't have good size. 
she actually isn't eating at all right now. Um, so I haven't, or if I have paired her, I've stopped breeding her. And this is an animal that I would give the year off to because all indications show me that she's not interested in, in breeding. I'm not even sure I've paired her. And if I did, don't think she would lock, but yeah, that, based off her behavior, based off she's, how she's laying in the tub, based on the fact that she's not eating, um, based on her size and how she recovered from laying this past season, um, she gets the year off. So this is an example of the opposite situation. Okay, so here's a lithium female whose tub I just sprayed down, and I didn't properly explain with the super fire, so let me explain what it is that I'm looking for, what behavior signs I'm looking for. So, the first behavior sign at this point in the season that I'm looking for is that, feed, that, that really, really aggressive feeding response to kind of calm down. Um, as the season progresses... I like to see that really strong feeding response early. Um, a sign of follicular growth and follicular development as, or sorry, as those follicles grow, that feeding response is gonna really, really slow down. And I believe this girl, she's actually stopped eating. Um, another sign I'm looking for is, or another behavior that I'm looking at is where the animal is laying in the tub. Because at this point, I should be seeing that animal moving towards the cooler end of the tub. Um, wanting to bull wrap, wanting to spend a lot of its time on the cool end of the tub. At this point in the season, I've seen this girl. I've seen another girl at times um, at the cool end. But I'm not seeing that behavior consistently. So I'm not able to show you as yet, hopefully in the next video. I'll be able to show you some examples of females bull wrapping and cooling. Um, another behavior that I look for also at this point in the season that's a really good sign of follicular, follicular development is the females laying inverted. Um, that's another sign that I look for. So at this point, what you want to be doing is continuing to feed and you're not feeding when you were feeding larger amounts of food when um, the, f the females are feeding really, really aggressively. As that feeding response kind of slows down, you want to do that with the food. So right now, most of my females that aren't ravenous for food, they're getting a 70 to 90 gram um, small rat every week and I'm not feeding anything more than that. I think that's enough rambling a lot, rambling on on this animal. Alright guys, at this point I do want to mention palpating. Some of the more experienced breeders might be wondering how come I'm not palpating the females to actually feel and figure out where they are in their follicular progress. Um, I personally am not that good at palpating and feeling follicles when they're really really small. So I usually wait until, so actually those two, I think I have two females right now that are off food. Usually that's a sign for me to palpate. Um, and I'll definitely cover palpation in one of the future videos. But at this point, I personally don't because I'm not good at feeling the really, really small follicles. But... All of you experienced breeders that are following the series, don't worry, palpation is coming, trust me. Alright, so that pretty much covers my weekly routine and what I'm looking for and the behaviors and signs I'm looking for in my females. I want to take this time to thank all the people once again. All the love we've been getting for the series, all the people who've been sharing the video, all the people sending me comments of encouragement and positivity, I thank you. Please keep sharing, please keep subscribing to the channel, 
Um, please keep watching our videos and liking and commenting. I read them all and it's greatly appreciated. So until the next video, take care. Take care.